take a particular step which we find is not always in agreement with the feelings of others. So I try to put this all down in a very condensed form. So basically I feel for me the theme music behind the clouds is the story of life. I got the rule of fortune by excelling myself in an audition that was keenly competed for. Actually, I had no hope of playing the part because there were so many other guys I felt were better than myself. But um, at last, the director gave me a script and said I could go ahead and read the part of Fortune. I was so happy to play the part. But for a big boy like Fortune, you know, I think she should be given a chance at times to make his or her voice, his own decisions. But Madame Abigo doesn't want that at all. That's her character in this play. And uh, well, she's a very successful woman, I must say. Uh, being that uh, as a Nigerian woman, to own a club, a big club like that, is a very big challenge. It's quite an interesting part, actually. But I must say, um, the, the, the character is not is not typical of the person playing it. <laughs> it's uh, like okay, just getting into character and uh, doing the bit. But that doesn't mean that that is what I am like in real life. You know, I like the part a lot because it it makes me do things and you know, things that. I, I'm not used to doing, like I've never been a supervisor in a nightclub where I just act the part and, and it's quite challenging and it's quite nice. Bai also is uh, a very, very loving person, likeable. Uh, the only part I see, uh, the quality in Bio that uh, most people might not like will be with his uh is being you know not wanting to accept his father and i guess that has to do with that it's been psychological what he went through and all that and so he couldn't find himself accepting a man that abandoned him for 19 years and coming back you know to have a kind of a reunion of the family he left some years ago um Looking at Bauer, the character in Behind the Clouds and myself, yeah, I think I, there's this similarity between, I'm a very sensitive person too. And um, when I'm playing that role, it's like, I said to myself, if my father should do, you know, or behave that the way Bauer's father did to him, definitely I'll react that way too. As Theodora, I wouldn't think of going out to the married man. Not because of any moral obligation to anyone, but because I simply don't like being the other woman, the second best. But I guess Felicia doesn't mind. I mind. I admire her courage, the way she handles men, and her sophistication. Well, I would really like to be like her. Not in every way, anyway. But like most of her, the way she looks, her confidence, I think I like that about her. Well, sometimes I feel like a thief because I like music very much and um, I'm outgoing. But uh, anyway, my mother is like Mr. Okunzwa. She's very understanding. But my father is not like Mr. Okunzwa. I mean, he will allow me to do what I want to do. And uh, I, Efe, Efe doesn't talk back to her father like the way I, I think I would anyway. Probably because of the fact that my father is different. And um, she is rather confused by a lot of things that are going on around her. Mm, whatever, whatever she read in school, she, she doesn't want to... She, she just likes the music, that's all. She's not thinking of other things apart from that. I think I'm a bit different in that aspect uh, because I have other things on my mind. 
apart from just music. And uh, I wouldn't like to cause trouble like she's causing at home. Mm. I have, we have about the same... I don't really have to do too much to put myself into a fit. Because she's, she's just like me, really. About the same, except for those little differences. I'm gentle. I like having fun. If I were, if Zach Amata were if his father, I would go to the nightclub with her. And man, listen, yes. I love it. But of course, well, the father wouldn't do that. So that's the difference between Okonzoa on screen and Zach Amata who plays Okonzoa. Okay, when I go down memory lane, uh, like when I was 18, I had strict parents. They wouldn't allow me to see my boyfriends like after I left school. So you see, getting into character is not a problem. Because the, there really is a great difference between Nosa Okonzoa and Maka Arthur Fum. Not very much, but then Nosa is kind of a portrayed, mediated reality, and Mark Arthur is a real life human being. I have tried to see Nosa like a boy who wants, uh, who is struggling in an average class family, who actually has a little bit more in taste than he can actually earn, and uh, who likes to get away with everything. And um, somehow, with my young, with my elder sister, and then sometimes I see Nosa fit into Arthur in a sense that um, Nosa is being portrayed, portrayed as, like a kind of boy who wants to enjoy life, which is not far away from my true life behavior. And uh, Nosa doesn't get a lot of petting like Mark Arthur Fong does in real life. But even then, it doesn't take me long or much to get into character. She's gentle, what you'd call typical woman. She's um, a bit of the understanding type and just normal, typical, nothing special, nothing spectacular about her. As against the, uh, her brother who is quite, um, I wouldn't say erratic, but sometimes very um, dogmatic about certain things. Fumi is more understanding, she's more gentle, she's, yeah, she's just typical woman, that kind of, of a person. It's funny though, but when I'm writing, it's difficult for me to um, write for Fumi, maybe because I'm playing the role. And um, I think about other characters I write for in depth, but somehow when it comes to Fumi, I haven't really, really thought about it. I said that, I just... You know, she's just simple, plain, that's all. Well, um, as um, an actor, I try as best as possible to make a difference between my own personality and the personality of the character in the play. Now, I am fortunate that I have been involved in the brainstorming session, so I have a lot more knowledge as to who the character of that boy is, and who the, which is the role I'm playing. But in essence, in, um, the Dapo is a very, very frustrated man. A man who has lost virtually everything that he has in terms of a family, and his only existing family now are these two children who are the children of his sister, his late sister. And now, finding him in this situation that their father who has abandoned these children when they were little kids, coming back and trying to take them. Uh, it's not very difficult to find, to, be, to, to, to find yourself reacting to that kind of uh, intrusion after so many years. Here is a man who has gone for 19 years and you think he will never surface again. And you've built up these kids who are the only living other members of your family. And then suddenly now somebody wants to come and claim them. I mean, it doesn't, it's not very hard to get into that kind of character. <laughs> now you have an idea as to how it all got started. The problems involved, the personal feelings of the cast about the characters they play, and the various inputs of members of the crew. For me, this has been a necessary insight to give. 
I hope that it has answered many questions that many have asked about the making of Behind the Clouds. Behind